All right, uh, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at uh, Data and Analytics Summit, Gartner, and I'm super excited to be with Tushar Agarwal. Uh, Tushar, you work for IBM. Very happy to have you, and you. Uh, welcome to the Robert Show. Thank you, Ravid. Excited to be here. Okay, awesome. Uh, Tushar, I know you've been doing very you know, interesting things in AI. Uh, I definitely want to learn a little about uh, you know, what your role is at IBM, but at the same time, if you would like to introduce yourself to our audience. Definitely. Hi, everyone. I'm Tushar Agarwal. I work as an AI engineer for IBM in the financial services industry. So I work with clients in building solutions with large language models uh, using our What's Next platform. And a bit about my background is that I have um, my background in, in education at computer science and a master's in data science, as well as uh, previously worked at the United Nations and SRE as well, along with starting an enterprise in the blockchain space. So I have a diverse set of experiences, and I want to bring that, those experiences in building impactful solutions for our clients at IBM. Okay, that's awesome. Uh, Tushar, in uh, AI engineer was one hot role that I've been hearing, and it's been very quickly all around the place, which is good. Uh, but uh, very less AI engineers that I see uh, because it's it's a it's a role that is now trending and uh, it's getting faster there. So definitely, I would want to know, learn a little about the role, but at the same time, also. Uh, since we are here at Gartner, would you like to tell us a little about uh, what have you been hearing around and uh, how does it go back to what you're doing? Definitely, yeah. So um, the conference has been exciting to say the least. Yeah. Um, and we have seen a lot of enterprise leaders come in and, and you know, with the advent of generative AI coming in and there's a lot of excitedness in the space as well. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of buzz and, and people are inquiring about what can they do and how can they accelerate their AI solutions and utilize this technology. Yeah. So with that, Coming to my role as well, what we do is using large language models or generative yep. AI, yep. we build solutions in, in very various use cases and industry, like particular focus on financial services industry, but also right. in the space of data and AI for social impact as well. But uh, we work on, on, on use cases in various uh, uh, industries and uh, also with a focus on AI governance. So okay. what we are seeing is that as we build these generative AI solutions, as they are able to generate better answers or yeah. uh, summarize context, you know, uh, we are seeing that. Uh, there are, there's a lot of focus on governance because you want the solutions to be there. You want you want them to have an impact, but you at the same time you want to make sure they're compliant with the regulations that are out there. And since they're influencing human decisions and uh, like influencing humans directly themselves, we want them, we want to ensure that uh, they are trustworthy and, and explainable. Uh, you are able to understand right. what is actually coming out of the solutions as well. Okay, uh, I'm gonna catch up on with this uh, one word that I'm kind of listening is around AI governance. Right? Yeah. Uh, I would love to know a little about AI governance. Like I've heard a lot about data governance for sure. Uh, yeah. But AI governance is something which is kind of picking up, and it's uh, very important. I feel. So can you tell us a little about that? Definitely. So. I think um, let's let's start with a high-level overview. Is that we are making AI solutions to be better than ourselves or to automate things, right? Yeah. So we don't want human biases to translate into the AI solutions as well. Right. So we need to understand that these solutions, which are automating decision making, which are influencing our, our human lives and outcomes directly, more so than like the previous software-based solutions, right? They are intelligent solutions, and exactly. they're they're helping us in decision ma making. So we want them to be unbiased. We want them to be explainable, and we want them to be robust. And that is what AI governance is all about. That you want our solutions to be better than us, and you need to regulate them in some manner or form as they are shaping human decision making. Okay. So that also brings me to another follow-up question. First of all, thanks for all the insights. And uh, so, you know, when I talk to also a lot of enterprise leaders, they're like. Okay, we we know now what AI is. Yeah. Uh, we're getting there. We're getting mature in terms of understanding AI. But uh, when you talk about AI governance, what industries are uh, you talking about? And do you have any use cases that you can share with us? Definitely. So some basic use cases that that we oversee are yep. such as you know if you're hiring like in HR, right? You want you don't want them to be biased against a particular race or a particular gender or particular income group, for instance, yep. right? Yep. So you want them to be unbiased in, in in hiring hiring people, for instance. Or when you have even like um, stores which have a scan and go technology that you pick up something and you are able to scan and and go. Right. You know there are some AI models which which segregate some transactions to be allowed and some to be not allowed. So right. that is again something that is directly influencing a human outcome, mm. right? Or if they are allowed to transact, Very similar to point. approving bank loans. Yeah. So you again don't want your biases to be like transferred to them. Right. And if they do mark you as something, like if they mark your transaction as fraudulent or 
something that is not allowed then you want to them to be explainable you want them you want to understand why that has happened right. so if it is something about your parameters that you can improve as well right mm -hmm. like the way you interact with things or your credit score or something at that you want it to be explainable so that you can understand where is the decision coming from where is the outcome coming love from it. love it oh fantastic explanation there and good good example so thanks for doing that in terms of um, i'm pretty sure 2024 is the year for ai and uh, it's getting there very quickly things are evolving uh, what are the market trends that you see um in 2024 there is a big focus on governance yeah. as i, I mentioned yeah. right but it's also about uh, like AI, inter like interpretability, like understanding what the decision was and how it was shaped, right. kind of tying back to it and ethical AI, right? Now, okay, you want to govern the solutions, you want to understand how it is, how how your models are uh, adopted, like in an end-to-end -end AI ML solution building, right. from the business understanding to development to kind of production and monitoring the models. You want to be able to monitor them for risks, but you also want to see as you scale your organization's AI use, yeah. You want to see how how they are, how you could govern them, but the ethical considerations around it as well, right? That should an AI model come into picture, like for example, for uh, the use case of recidivism, right? If you're trying to predict if a person should uh, be left out of prison early based on um, if like if they could commit more crimes. So in that use case, you are you're taking decisions that directly impact human lives again, and there are a right. lot more ethical considerations as well, yeah. like your definition of what is fair. It needs to be considered. So I think those decisions, those those decisions that are coming out there, right, are are ethical and understandability, interoperability, interpretability of AI, are something that is more like shaping up as we go into it. Even in systems like healthcare, right, who to assign a bed, a resource to? Like if there are only ten beds in a hospital, who should get it first, right? The source of optimization in hospitals, like who should a resource and a machine be assigned to? So there is if a if a person has uh, less time to live to that person but or if a person has who has higher chance to live but will have to be on the, with the on the resource for longer so who right. should you assign to so those are ethical considerations that are also shaping uh, the advent of ai i really love it uh, yeah. thanks for sharing these uh, because it becomes very interesting in terms of not only from the government aspect but uh, you know there are various industries which are being you know which need AI governance. Definitely. So thanks for sharing that. Uh, I'm pretty sure the audience would love to have more questions for you and you know they would want to reach out to you. So one quick question if they want to reach out to you which is the best place is it LinkedIn or some other uh, social platform that you are on and uh, where can they follow your content? Definitely. So the best place to reach out to me would be on LinkedIn. Okay. I'm also going to start writing more about generative AI, the use cases and nice. the work that we're doing in social yeah. impact as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, definitely. We definitely want people like you to write more about generative AI and share your thoughts about what's happening in this space. It's always helpful, but uh, looks like you're doing something pretty amazing in this space. So thank you once again for visiting the Ravid Show and sharing all the insights. Tushar, this was great. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you, thank you for having for me. Watching us.